Uh, Nutrient Cycles and Ecosystems Part 2. In our last video, we looked at the carbon cycle and we were, were trying to ascertain how carbon moves through the environment and gets recycled. In this video, we're going to take a look at the nitrogen cycle because nitrogen also cycles through the environment. Both nitrogen and carbon are important components for living things. Uh, in other words, they can't function without them. Uh, nitrogen is an important part of DNA and proteins and so it's important for muscles and growth. Most nitrogen is located in the atmosphere as nitrogen gas. It's also located in oceans and soil and a bit of nitrogen is in terrestrial ecosystems and waterways and that would include the living things in those areas. Nitrogen is cycled three ways through the ecosystem through nitrogen fixation, nitrification, and through uptake. Let's take a look at nitrogen fixation. In nitrogen fixation, the nitrogen in the atmosphere, the N2 gas, uh, is converted into compounds containing nitrate, NO3, and ammonium, NH4. And there's a couple of ways that that happens. One way, and this doesn't really account for very much of the nitrogen being converted, is through lightning, which isn't really shown on this graphic. But every time there's a thunderstorm, the lightning provides energy that allows N2 to be converted to nitrate and ammonium ions as it reacts with oxygen. You can see the nitrogen in each of these compounds. It's sort of the point of writing down the, um, the formulas for them beside uh, each one is to show you that there is nitrogen in each one of those compounds. Compounds formed from the ions, uh, nit the nitrates and the ammonium, enter the soil and then plants can use them by taking them up through their roots. Another way that atmospheric nitrogen is converted into usable nitrogen for plants is through uh, nitrogen fixing soil bacteria. And you can see some of that over here. And the reason these little things look like beans is because the plants that can do this actually have, uh, the reason that it looks like little beans is because the plants that can do this are from the legume family, so they're like beans and peas uh, and anything like that, edamame, soy. Um, the reason they can do it is because they have these little nodules on their roots and inside these nodules you have the nitrogen fixing bacteria so it's sort of a symbiotic relationship because the nitrogen fixing bacteria will actually convert the atmospheric nitrogen into nitrogen compounds that the plant can use things like the ammonium or the nitrates. Okay, so an example of that would be uh, rhizobium, which converts N2 gas into ammonium ions, and then the bacteria, and then the plants uh, provide sugars to the bacteria. So this is the symbiotic relationship between the two. The nitrogen fixing bacteria that live in the roots of these legumes provide the nitrogen compounds in a form that the plant can use, and the plant itself provides sugars both for itself and the bacteria uh, that provide it with the nitrogen ions and so it's a symbiotic relationship. Remember the way the plants do that is through photosynthesis, the sun. Okay and the third way that nitrogen fixation is done is by cyanobacteria in the water, usually in fairly stagnant water like in a pond. We've got this bacteria that actually does photosynthesis and when it does photosynthesis it converts some of this atmospheric nitrogen into ammonium as well. So, so we've got three ways to um, convert the atmospheric nitrogen, the N2, into something that the plants can actually pick up. And the first one was lightning. The first one was lightning and with lightning uh, we saw the N2 get converted into uh, the compounds nitrate, the nitrates and the ammonia. The second method was the nitrogen fixing bacteria in the nodules of the legumes and they basically did something very similar where they converted the N2 gas again into ammonium ions. And then finally, and then finally, 
we have the cyanobacteria that through photosynthesis converts the N2 gas in the atmosphere into ammonium. Nitrification. Nit nitrification occurs if nitrogen fixing bacteria are not present. Uh, ammonium, NH4, that's sort of the product of all this N2 conversion uh, by the three methods we just discussed. The ammonium is converted into nitrate. So if you recall in the last section only lightning can convert N2 directly into nitrates and the other two methods, the legumes and the cyanobacteria convert to ammonium. So the ammonium needs to be converted to nitrates as well. And it's nitrifying bacteria that is responsible for doing this. Uh, different species of nitrifying bacteria convert nitrate, this NO2, into the NO3. So it's a two-step process. First step, we have one type of nitrifying bacteria converting ammonium to nitrites, and the second step is the nitrifying bacteria converting the nitrites into the nitrates. Then nitrates can be taken up or assimilated by plants. So this is the form that the plants can use and it's basically then in the soil and the plant roots can absorb it. We have decomposer bacteria as well and decomposer bacteria convert nitrogen trapped in the proteins and DNA of dead animals and convert it back to ammonium so plants die, animals die and when they die they begin to rot is what we say but that's really the decomposer bacteria that's doing that and it's going to convert the nitrogen compounds from the proteins and the DNA into ammonium and then the ammonium can enter that nitrifying or that um, nitrifying sort of pathway to create the nitrites and then finally the nitrates that the plants can reuse again. The last little thing to talk about here is denitrification and denitrification returns nitrogen to the atmosphere. There's two ways this can happen. Um, we can have volcanic eruptions and the volcanic eruptions produce ammonia, uh, nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen dioxide so basically it's direct. The other method is through denitrifying bacteria, these guys right here. And the denitrifying bacteria convert NO3 directly back to N2. So denitrifying bacteria sort of are a direct route from the nitrates in the soil back into atmospheric nitrogen. So just to summarize, we first looked at three different methods that N2, which is unusable by living things, can be converted into a usable form. There was lightning, which accounts for very little of the conversion of N2 into nitrates and ammonium. There was the nitrogen fixing bacteria that convert atmospheric nitrogen into ammonium and then there was the cyanobacteria that do the same thing. They convert the uh, nitrogen in the atmosphere into ammonium. Most living things don't use ammonium directly so it needs to be converted into nitrates and that's a two-step process where the ammonium uh, is changed by nitrifying bacteria into nitrites and then the nitrites are converted into nitrates which can be assimilated or taken up by plants in their roots and then used as um, a nutrient to make proteins and DNA. So we also talked about denitrification which involves denitrifying bacteria and this is where nitrogen can be taken out of the soil and the nitrogen in the soil is in the format of nitrates. The denitrifying bacteria can convert that directly into nitrogen gas that's a byproduct of its metabolism and you basically get ni more nitrogen gas back into the atmosphere so you can see how it cycles back it can actually be converted to nitrogen compounds in the soil but it can also be converted from nitrogen compounds in the soil back into atmospheric nitrogen and volcanoes also account for a little bit of this uh, denitrifying process okay so nitrogen uh, can get removed entirely from ecosystems in other words it can be removed from this cycle and that happens when excess nitrate and ammonium are not taken up by plants um, they mix with rainwater and they get washed into the soil groundwater and streams and if this uh, nitrogen uh, if these nitrogen compounds settle on the ocean lake or river bottoms they form sediments which eventually form rocks and then they're basically uh, locked up nitrogen compounds they're locked in rock for centuries until weathering releases them humans can also have an impact on this cycle and human activities kind of place 
twice as much nitrogen into the ecosystem than would normally be there. And we do this by fossil fuel burning, sewage treatment, or fertilizer in agriculture. And this excess nitrogen uh, gets washed away or leaches into waterways and it can cause something called eutrophication or algal bloom. So you get these lovely waterways and pretty soon you get all this algae that feeds on or that uses the nitrogen. They just go crazy reproductively because they've got so much nitrogen. And fortunately what they do then is block out the light for the organisms that live below and they also kind of uh, choke out the area because it uses up all the carbon dioxide and oxygen. Remember that plants use both carbon dioxide and oxygen. Carbon dioxide for photosynthesis and oxygen for cellular respiration. Well if they tend to use up all that oxygen you're going to have dead organisms um, and that's what happens so it can actually uh, kill these aquatic organisms. Also this algae actually will uh, produce neurotoxic um, chemicals and neuro means nerve so it's any kind of a chemical that's toxic or poisonous to the nerve so it can kill things like shellfish like clams and oysters, it can kill seabirds and marine mammals like whales and so on. So humans can tip the the cycle uh, of nitrogen cycling or nitrogen circulation throughout the uh, biosphere by adding extra nitrogen and that can have a devastating effect on on aquatic life. Okay in the next video we'll take a look at the phosphorus cycle.